Now, normally I wouldn't say this about any of my videos about navigation, but by watching this, you won't improve your navigation or map reading skills whatsoever. The reason being is this video is aimed primarily at people like me who, who run map reading courses. Um, but if you're not an instructor, feel free to watch it if you want to. This video will give one of the methods that you can use to calculate compass bearing errors. Um, that's all it will do. I hardly ever use this on courses um, because that would get quite boring. But it does come in handy now and again if you want to give somebody um, an exact answer to a question. Oh, and it's also very handy for uh, marking exam papers. I'll give you the function first and then afterwards, if you want to watch the end of the video, I'll explain how and why it works. You might remember this chord function from your school days, but we can use it for a slightly different purpose to most people. You're going to need a calculator or at least a mobile phone with a calculator on it. So do you want to pause the video now um, and go and get one? I'll just wait. Okay then, have you got one? Right, let's say you've asked your course participants to come up with a bearing and a distance from here where I am on 0.483. I'll put it on your screen. And you want to work out the bearing and a distance from here at 483 to this track junction that I, you can see on your screen. Now, they tell you the distance is 1100 meters and the bearing is 30 degrees. Now, as an instructor, you're going to immediately recognize that the bearing is 40 degrees. The distance is about right, so that's fine. So you'll be able to calculate that they will miss their target by 192 meters. Now, 192 meters is uh, quite precise, and it's simply not possible to do that, either looking at a map or using a compass in any way. You have to use a function to do it. So this is the function. It is two times the distance times the sign of the error divided by two. As you remember, hopefully from school, that's just a derivation of the standard circle arc theorem. Um, I said it's the error divided by two. Okay, so in this case, they should have walked on 40 degrees, but they actually walked on 30, so the error is 10. So how do you do that on a mobile phone? So the first thing you do is open the calculator on your mobile phone and then switch it across to scientific calculator. You should be able to see sin or sign on the screen. Let's do a practice together first and see how we get on. Let's say somebody was walking on, I don't know, pick a figure, 1650 meters, and they should have been walking on a bearing of one, two, three, but unfortunately they actually walked on a bearing of one, three, two. So we're doing this one together. In this case, as they should have walked on one, two, three, but they went on one, three, two, the error is nine. So it's two times the distance, which is 1650, times the sign of the error, which is nine, divided by two and rounded up, that makes 259 meters. Did you get that? If you did, well done. Let's do another one. This time, do it, well, you can do this one on your own. Let's see if you've, uh, if you've got it. You can always pause the video and, or reverse it and go back and, uh, until you get it right. Let's see if you can get this one. Say somebody had to walk on 850 meters and they were supposed to walk on a bearing of 351, but unfortunately they walked on a bearing of 12. Now in this case, bear in mind there are 360 degrees in a circle. So pause the video and see how you get on. Okay then, did you get 309 meters? If you did, then you've got it. If not, go back and uh, just have enough <laughs> keep trying until you get it so that's the function it's two times the distance times the sign of the error divided by two it may be a good idea to put to screenshot this what's on your screen at the moment and save it on your phone as a, a reminder that's the end of the first bit of the video so that's it you finished or if you want to in the next bit i'll actually show you why that particular function works as it does this is part two of the compass bearing error calculation video. If you haven't watched the first part, I'd suggest you do first, otherwise this section won't make any sense whatsoever. I'll do a quick explanation of why the function works. 
Okay, here we go. Hopefully you remember from school that a circle has a circumference and that a section of the circumference is called the arc or called an arc. If you know the distance from the center of the circle to the arc and the angle between the two ends of the arc, you can calculate its length using a simple arc formula, which would be the angle times pi divided by 180 times the radius. So in this case, the arc would be 96.6 meters. You can also calculate the straight line distance between the ends of the arc. This is known as a chord. And the formula for that is two times the radius times the sine of the angle divided by two. Now, if we go back to our map and have a look at the initial error your course participants made, we can think of the 1100 meter distance to the target as the radius of a circle. We know the difference between the correct and the incorrect compass bearings is 10 degrees, so that's our angle. Now, there's an arc formed between the two bearings on an imaginary circle. So we know the radius, which is the distance, and we know the angle, which is the difference between the two bearings. All we need to do to calculate the direct line distance between the two points is use a standard chord formula, which is, as I've said, two times the radius times the sine of the angle divided by two. And that gives us 191.7 meters, which we round up to 192 meters. So that's it. I hope you found it at least a little bit interesting. Don't forget to screenshot this what's you know this formula that's on your screen at the moment and to save it to you know to help you remember.